So folks, what will you be doing this week? Most might be busy with assignments, some with summer projects and so on. But what about your progeny? Are they getting the right dose of pep talks? Is their company good? Are they not under the influence of elements detrimental to the cause of a progressive society? Namaskar, this is Vedika Singh and you have landed on TFI Post, the ultimate destination for an alternative and refreshing perspective of every social and political discourse. Today I am here to tell you how beautifully and brutally does the Kerala story unfolds its layers of truth compelling each of us to stand and face the facts. The Kerala story is not just another story. It is the truth that we read somewhere or the other, but either don't ponder over it or conveniently choose to ignore it. Now the matters have come to the point where a movie is needed to wake us up from the deep slumber we are in. After contemplating on all these aspects, a simple yet profound question arises that strikes at the very core of our consciousness. Why, indeed, is the Kerala story necessary? Could it be deemed as a creation solely intended to disrupt the delicate fabric of harmony in our society? Perhaps but only if observed through the prism of pseudo-secularism, where individuals, much like ostriches, intentionally bury their heads deep within the abyss of ignorance. On a serious note, have you not heard of the grooming gangs lurching in Europe, especially UK? Haven't you heard of what people like Nadia Murad had to face at the hands of the dreaded ISIS? If their stories are true, why are stories like the Kerala story disregarded as propaganda? Who do the self-proclaimed custodians of the society against this movie fear? Just be honest, if someone respects his or culture and under the garb of it, influences your or your kids and kin and brings them to a point of no return, converting them by deceit, is that acceptable? This is revolting for many, but unfortunately, something witnessed almost every day in Kerala. While one may engage in debates over the accuracy of figures or the methods employed by certain individuals, can anyone genuinely deny the existence of the problem at hand? To assert that, only a single path to enlightenment is valid. Diminishing the worth of those who honour different beliefs is nothing short of sheer lunacy. Yet, this dogma of supposed secularism is incessantly forced down our throats. How disheartening it is to witness the scarcity of individuals willing to address this critical matter, let alone portray it boldly on the grand canvas of the silver screen. Amidst the myriad incidents that unfold in this poignant film, there are a couple in scene that leave an indelible mark on one's soul. In one poignant scene, we witness the harrowing plight of Shalini as she brings forth life into this world. Yet she is cruelly denied even the most basic necessities a mother should have for her precious newborn. With resilience, she manages to procure Miyaga rations from another suffering soul allowing a fleeting moment of connection with a distant kin. However, in an agonizing twist of fate, that compassionate woman is abruptly seized by her own tormentor. If he may even be called her husband, and with a single heart-wrenching shot, her very existence is extinguished. Her unforgivable crime? Assisting a mother in nourishing her innocent, helpless child. Another incident that makes your stomach churn is when the character of Geetanjali, whose reputation has been damaged brutally by Abdul, reconciles with her parents and asks her communist father, why did you not teach me about our religion, our culture? Her father was stunned, unable to answer the rare honesty in her daughter's queries. You may find that the film attempts to show Kerala as a radical hotbed. You may whine that the figure of 32,000 women being converted to Islam is not correct, but can you deny that such atrocities do not exist at all? Now coming to the point of 32,000 girls being converted, this has been subject to a lot of ridicule and I believe the censor board, though to some extent, has objected to the same as well. For an instance, let's assume that the number is incorrect. But, and I say but, is this also incorrect that a significant chunk of masses in Kerala are attracted to the ISIS and either by deceit or volition become a part of it. Can you ignore the fact that there is an entire network dedicated to this very operation of attracting, deceiving and converting non-Muslim girls for a sinister purpose? 
Can you just think of it? Forget everything else. Is denying food to a newborn infant even acceptable? Even the most stone-hearted would shiver on such a thought. Yet there are folks who dare to call every single mention of such incidents a figment of imagination. Some states like Tamil Nadu are also actively ensuring that none of the masses are acquainted with this bitter truth. Unfortunately, it isn't only the Hindus who are suffering Mr. M.K. Stalin. In truth, while the Kerala story may not possess flawless perfection, it undeniably stands as a cinematic masterpiece that demands our undivided attention. Its profound narrative holds within it a vital message that we cannot, under any circumstance, overlook. The responsibility now lies in your hands, dear parents, as you contemplate the future you wish to forge for your cherished children. Thank you.